Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that today, this is a day that you have made for us. We have come to rejoice, to be glad in it. Thank you that you gave us to know where we can go. For in the arms of God, there is a hiding place. We love you today. Now, Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are God, our strength, and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You can be seated in the house of God. God bless your heart. On, uh, on Wednesday, we had the opportunity to hear ourselves on radio. Amen. Again, again. And I, at this time, I want to ask uh, Mrs. Erica Melbourne. If you come up, Erica, just share a little bit of what you're doing in the program because we want folk to now understand that uh, other than 103.9, there's another radio station in the house. There's a microphone there, Erica. Grab the mic. Let us know there's another radio station in the house. Amen. Good morning. I didn't expect this, but um, I guess I'm a talker, so I'll just go ahead and talk. Um, I'm Erica, of course, and I am a DJ and a talk show host, and I host a show called The African American Profile. And so if anyone out there is, or you know someone that does anything to enhance, to um, encourage the African American community, Please let me know because um, on my show I'd love to have you or someone you know. Um, but we just want to let the community aware that there are some African Americans out here that are still not just about God but about everybody. You know, because we get in church and we say how we love God and it's all about God, but then we don't show God and we don't show love. So I had the opportunity to have Bishop Simmons on my show and a good friend of mine. <laughs> And it was, it was just a blessing to have him and to share with our listeners and our audience just how important it is for us to band together, to come together as our families, um, to look over our young men. Um, you know, I, I think there's three things that's hurting in the African-American community, and one is relationships, families. We don't have enough families. Uh, we have too many single-parent homes. Too many of our young men are going to prison. I have a 25-year-old and a 20-year-old. They're in college. They don't have any children. They're learning. They're growing. They're graduating in June and July of this year. Wow. And wow. that is what my contribution wow. to America, to the world, is to give my two sons and just to pray that God keeps a hedge of protection around them so that they'll continue to grow. And so you don't see them here. I do have children. <laughs> I don't want no little children. So, but... um. You know, like I said, keep us in prayer. Keep my station in prayer, um, 89.7. Um, that's on the FM dial. Keep me in prayer that I can continue to grow because it is my passion. I enjoy doing it. And as I said, enjoy. I enjoy talking. So enjoy. that's it. <laughs> but just keep us in prayer and that the African-American profile will grow and become a very successful show. Thank you. Amen. 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 We really enjoyed ourselves. Erica made us feel right at home. It's, uh, she gave a statistic that was just amazing about the number of men, black men in particular, between Hispanic and black, uh, the percentages of the millions, I think we had like three million Yes. So that tells you, that tells you we, we got some, we got some work to do. It's a, it's a shame because a lot of the black women, and women in particular, but black females are, are going through uniquenesses because these brothers are incarcerated. And, uh, and it's a shame because the system, I, I would, I, it would be nice to get the amount of money that they house these individuals for back into the house. Could you imagine if you could invest that back into the homes? And uh, it, it's, just, it's just something. And, and a lot of it has to do with a lot of young men that are, are business-minded, just that they're dealing with the wrong commodity. They're very business-minded, amen. 
It's the commodity that they're dealing with. If you could switch these brothers around, could you imagine? Amen. So, and there's some, you know, it's amazing because America has, has moved towards a servicing country. We don't manufacture a lot anymore. All our manufacturing is sent overseas. So we service between hospitals and what have you. It's a shame that they're servicing the wrong commodity. If they legalize it, maybe they could do okay, but uh, it ain't going to happen. Well, they did it with moonshine with liquor, so I'm going to back out of that. Uncle Sam, if he can get his hand in it, amen. Those moonshiners were running. Uncle Sam said, you can't beat them, join them. Hey, that's the truth. That's why you come up with all these liquor stores. And stay li amen. Uncle Sam said, we can make money. So I'm not going to promote legalizing drugs, but maybe, just maybe. God knows. I'm, I want to deal with something that really has blessed me over the years. And uh, I was uh, going over this psalm. Right now I'm just dealing with psalms. I had a, something else in mind, but psalms has really been working in my spirit. And we're going to go to the 116th psalm. And I want to use for a subject, he heard my voice. He heard my voice. I'm, I'm going to, over the course of all these years of being saved, I've been saved longer than I was. I was, I'm in the, I've been in the church. Or I, I want to use it this way better than just being in the church. Because we've got a lot of folk in the church that ain't saved. But I've been with the Lord longer than I've been, or been with knowing the Lord. Because I know that if I had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't have made it. How many would say, yeah, that'd be the truth. If it had not been for God on my side, even when I did not recognize him as Lord and Savior, he was, all, he was taking care of me, man. How many know that'd be the truth? Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, Lord knows I'd have been done. In the 116th Psalm, it starts out reading, and I'm using the NIV because it just works real good for me uh, right now. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me, and ain't. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Yeah, on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious, righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O oh Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, and said, I am greatly afflicted, and in my dismay, I said, all men are liars. Have you ever said that? I, I got to a point. Let's see. I, I don't want to say it, but the government just, they want to tell the truth. But it just, we have truths, but I'll leave that alone to talk about it. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thanks, thank offering to you. 
I will call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. I believe, glory to God, this is a praise, of, uh, a psalm of thanksgiving. Back when I got saved, I'm, I'm going back, I'm blowing the dust off some of the, the tablets of the archives that I, when I got saved. We got saved under a blanket of thank you. Anybody out there remember that? You would come up to the altar. Now we're pretty much, you know, we're more lax. We don't press the issue. Back then the mothers would get a thank you out of you. The elders or whoever was, was we called it coaching. Uh, the individuals in front, we would coach you to the level of thank you. And because of that, because of that, I believe that I thank the Lord more now than I've ever thanked him before. I would get on that altar, God knows. I lost myself. Now, you know, we call you up to the altar and we, we know you're praying and you're committing your way to the Lord. But man, when I got up there, it was just me and God. I wasn't thinking about who was on the left or right. I, to be very honest with you, I didn't even care. I had a goal in mind. But church, you know, when you think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, when you, I, I, you know, I'm sitting here, God bless my heart, I feel like running. When you think on, now, I've heard people, in, 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 and I've tried it even in myself, that you look at a day and, and what a day brings, and sometimes you, the day just doesn't seem to be going just quite like you would like it to go. But when it's all over, said and done, how many can say, Lord, I thank you? You could be in situations. Young people, I, you know what? I'm going to talk to the young people right now. Back, I was 23 years old when I got, 22 years old when I got saved. Young people, if there ever been a time you need to lay on the altar and thank God, y'all got some stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, you, you look, my, my pike just about done. I'm just about, I'm just about coming to the close of my trip. Amen. See, y'all got some stuff coming down this road. Matt, right now, a, a marriage certificate, I don't want to even use the word not worth the papers written on, but I'm not going to do away with it because if I said it, y'all go out and say, Pastor said I don't have to get married, so I'm not going to say it, but it's amazing how, what, we're, what are we actually looking for in a relationship? When I got married, I, I really, I'm going to be very straight up. I didn't know really. I knew I was getting, got up and said what I said. But I really didn't know till the rubber started meeting the road. And when the rubber started meeting the road, I had to make a quality decision. Amen. I, I'm going to stay with this. I'm going to ride with it. But I, I tell you what, every marriage, every individual can say, I'm closing the book. How many would say amen? amen? All of us. My wife could have said, I could have said, forget this. Because you're dealing with people's values, ideals. Do I compromise? And God knows compromising now is a whole nother story. Amen. The one thing, though, that I want to bring out is that God is listening to you. As much as you don't think God is, you know what? It took me a while in my saved life to come to the reality that God, I'm trusting you to make the call. How many of you ever put in for something, a loan or whatever, wanted to get a home, a car, whatever, and it fell through? When it fell through, you felt like, oh my God, it's the worst thing. When I've come to the realization, Lord, I thank you. Amen. When it falls through, obviously, see, that's when you start trusting. Now, y'all with me out there, that, 
I'm trusting God. I, Lord, if I, if I put in for the loan, if it go through, glory to God. If it don't go through, glory to God. Because obviously there's a reason. There's a reason. See, let me share something with you. You didn't just get up this morning because you thought I'm getting up, going to new life. No, church, it don't work like that. Let me go to the book of, of Proverbs. Let me keep, I'm standing in Psalms, but I'm going to the book of, book of Proverbs. The 16th proverb. I want to talk with you. I don't think, see, here's what we think. We think we're in control. You're not as in, is in control as you think you are. I passed my cousin, Peg. We were, she was, we were going to Glassboro Church. She was coming this way. She didn't see it. But Peggy's whole mindset, she was coming to New Life. Do you know how many people today thought they were going somewhere and is not there right now? How many people last night went to sleep with this mindset, I'm getting up this morning, that didn't get up? I, when I went to the trauma center with uh, Marge, and met Marge there. Eldrin had a trip. He knew where he was going. Had in mind. But where he ended up, and, and now I'm going to share something with your church. Don't you think that when you go through a tragedy and you go through, that God just left you here because you were lucky? Yeah, no, you, you, I, oh, I've heard people say, man, you luck. Ain't no lucky. The only lucky I know is my sister, and we're going to change her name. Man, you sure was lucky. No, there's lucky sitting over there, but we'll leave that alone. No, if God did not allow you to have one more day. Oh, God. Yes, now, I'm going to share something with y'all. The older I'm getting, I don't even see. I'm going to tell you what. The older you get when you're saved, you start feeling heavenly. I'm just sharing with y'all that want to just, y'all young, stay saved. You start feeling heavenly. Hey Amen. I feel like, well, he's going to die. I want to share something with you. My wife, I love my wife dearly. And I looked at my insurance level, and I want her to rejoice. When I'm laid up there or wherever I'm laid at, I, don't want, I want her to cry for a minute. You know, don't go crazy. Lose your mind. Like I'm not, you know, like I'm not okay, you know. But I want her, if God say the same, I want her to be okay. Now, that don't mean I want brothers lined up on 2031 Grand Avenue, but, <laughs> but I don't think I have to worry about that because I know my wife. I know my children. If you, you, if you can't fill my shoes, you're going to have a tough, tough road to hoe. I'm a unique brother. Don't kid yourself. But, you, you know, what? And I want to tell you all something, church. Here's one thing that I'm, I'm learned, I've learned, and I'm learning even more. When you put your, see, God listened to, let me, let me read. Uh, to, in the 16th verse, it says, to man belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. That means you can think of something that's in you and you want to do it, but, but God listening to you. Now, I'm telling you, that's why sometimes it's good to say, I'm going to graduate college. Because sometimes you need God to get you through this. Now, y'all listening to me. That's why when mama or daddy or somebody talking about you, I can't wait till you get out of my house. That's when you say, Lord, I can't wait till I get a place of my own. Because God will help you. You know, I'm going to lay up on mama till Jesus come back, but... But God, look, and all a man ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. You know, that's when you can't do wrong. One of the, one of the biggest milestones in my life is when I could, could admit to me, man, you're wrong. You know you're wrong. You, matter of fact, you can't get help till you admit you're wrong. How many know that? 
I can, when you're that person, I can quit when I want, they lying. You look them right in the face and say, you lying, man. You can't quit nothing when you, I do this now. I take this cigarette, throw it away right now and go find it later. <laughs> Pick it right out of the trash. I can lay this cake down right now. I don't have to, I can stop doing this now. You're lying. You're lying. Because you didn't start it like right. See, that's the thing. That, see, one thing I want you to write down in your, th- th- your mind. When you get hooked up with the devil, he'll take you farther than you want to go. That means you're lost. And he'll take you longer than you wanted to stay. See the deal? I remember when I was doing certain things. Oh, man, I ain't going to do this tomorrow. How many ever did that? Know what I'm talking about? You did wrong, right? And you say to yourself, I ain't going to do that again. Uh, tomorrow. Ooh, I ain't going to do it. Jesus. I, I really mean it. I ain't going to do that again. Week from later. Ah, God knows. I'm, I'm, I mean it now, y'all. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not going to do this again. Two years later. How many know what I'm talking about? Been hooked into something and you like, then, all, then you start making excuses for it. See, I'm going to tell you when you know you hook, you start making excuses for it. Only reason I'm doing this because this woman don't mean me no good. I wouldn't be out in these streets if she, you know. I wouldn't be beating these kids like this if they didn't deserve this killing I'm getting ready to put on them. Because <laughs> I'm going to kill them. Been mad. You, you done got roughed up at the job, you're going to come back and hurt people. Take it out on your wife. She's trying to cook a dinner. You mad. <clears throat> cook, kicking the door in. Uh, I want to share that. <laughs> Commit to the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. I have learned if I even go into Walgreens, Lord, help me to go into Walgreens and buy just what I need to buy and come out of here not spending money that I don't have. Oh, y'all listening. I, see, y- y'all don't need me to sing you date Mary had a little lamb. You need to hear this. Because you spending money you ain't, you don't have. No, you spending money that belongs to somebody else. Now, I'm, I'm, God, how you get over there, Simmons? I told y'all the gas man mad with y'all. He tired of you. Electric man. Doctor. Forget the doctor. <laughs> you can forget the doc. Doctor Bills. What? He's a he's a l- idiot. He's a lunatic. First of all, he just walked by my room anyhow. <laughs> Didn't do nothing. And that be the truth. See, you paying the doc. You paying the doctor because he is the doctor. He ain't paid. He ain't mad. His residence is doing his work. But believe me, you're going to pay him. The Lord works out everything for his own what? Y'all, y'all need to underline that and put that somewhere in the mantle in your home or whatever. The Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked for the day of destruction. Nobody's in charge but God. Don't think the devil, and and see, the devil knows this. Here's what he knows. I got an end coming. He don't know when, but he knows it's coming. That's why I, I learned when I see people prospering, leave them alone. Don't get mad with folk when they prospering and you trying to figure out where they got it from. I mean, if I had a dollar for everybody that tried to figure out what I, how I got my stuff, I'd be a good, I'd be pretty well off right now. I know people go home and be talking, even on the, whatever. How do you get that? Come and ask me. You asking the wrong person. You go, you, you ask your neighbor, how did, don't go ask the neighbor about Erica. Come out, go talk to her. Talk to her, don't, don't, don't look. Yo, y'all listening to me. Young people, y'all listen. Because y'all gossip much more than we do. Gossiping. Talking about stuff you don't even know. <laughs> one, of the, one of the biggest lies 
Listen, y'all listen to me. A big lie. I said, look, you had sex and, and she go to the bathroom like that. You good, man. Tell her, sex bathroom. Sex ba-. And you know, I believe that idiot. I didn't read no books. I didn't go nowhere or talk to somebody who knew. I believed a joker who had three kids. I'm like, you did, did you do that? That's good. Thank you. And like, a, y'all, y'all, young folk, are y'all listening? One of the biggest, biggest mistakes we've made is listening to the wrong people. How many ever listened to the wrong person? Yeah, you do this, you ain't got to worry about it. Don't, ain't nothing going to happen. You okay. That's just what the devil told Eve. Y- y'all, I wish y'all write that down. Don't you look, look, God lying. Indirectly, here's what he told Eve. God's lying. You, 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 all God knows, God knows that when you eat the fruit, you're going to be like God. You big no, you, you, God had already told you you like him. No, you want to be hired. You want to call all the shots. I want to control my destiny. How many ever heard, I want to control my destiny? I know young folk, glory to God. I told you all this story. This story, every time I hear it, every time I hear it in my spirit, Father, that young girl had a scholarship. She was a softball player, second to none. Real doing excellent in school. College already picked out. Get ready to graduate in May. This individual boyfriend she riding with, you know, God help me with the name calling. And he turns a U-turn on a four-lane highway. Don't take a brilliant man to figure that one out. U-turn and kill. The car hits on her side. Who dies? Her. Now the father mad with God. Don't get mad at God. See, the first thing you better understand, get mad at the right person or the right individual. Nobody get mad at the devil. Devil, the last one we get mad at. Amen. God should have God. He, if he's in control of everything, he should have. How come he let the typhoon come through? Why you build your house on water? <laughs> and sand. You know, even when we were talking with that baby on last Sunday, last Sunday we, we closed it. We should have left it open, but that's okay. You know, what time did y'all get up last Sunday morning? I'll, I'll leave that alone. Um, I, that baby got, this, this young baby got beat. She was at, a, at a, a place, and this girl leaped on her and beat this baby. Yeah, it was just frail. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, about the size of Anna, Lee. well, Anna, Anna, where you at, baby? Raise your hand. The size of my little baby there. This big girl beat that girl, beat her. I mean, scarred her. But then I asked her this. I said, "Where were?" She said, "I was at uh, this place, or one of the casinos." I said, "When were you there?" New Year's Eve night. I want to tell y'all something. Y'all listen to me. You can go in the wrong place at the wrong time and still be God's. God ain't going to, the Holy Spirit, how many of y'all know the Holy Spirit does talk? I'm, he does. Have you ever heard, don't do that? How many ever heard that? Don't do that. And here's what you do. Mm. Mm. And then you have the audacity to say something told me. Now when you say something, now, now let, let me share something with you. I'm walking, I feel that hip bone. If I walked over to Dorrance and said, Dorrance, don't do that. And then Dorrance goes to Mildred and said, somebody told me not to do that. Now, that's pretty offensive because I told you. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, you're with me. I got a name. Pastor Simmons told me not to do that. Well, when you start acknowledging me, you start coming to another level. I wish y'all grab hold of this. You're going to another level. See, when you, that's why when God said, acknowledge me and all that. So when you say, God told me. Now, when you start saying, God told me, you know what you start doing? You start listening. 
I know something when, when Honey and Sonny told me, I knew who told me. And I listened. Oh, Jesus. Daddy said, don't go out, even though I went out on the road. I got beat for playing in a dirt road. I still, that's still going on my head. But they beat me. And they beat me because they told me not to. It wasn't the road, it was the not to. It was like it was a, it was like it was a racetrack or something. Every day, you can count the cars on one hand that went through, but that's okay. I'm not going to hold that against them. They told me not to. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. God already has a plan. He's already got heaven and he's got hell. You can do whatever you want to do. You ain't changing that. If you do this, you're going to heaven. If you do this, you're going to hell. You ain't going to change it. You can't walk. See, this is what's going to. That's why we cannot deal with time when this is all over. You know how long it's going to take when you start hearing all the, all the different why people did what they did in that line? Lord, you know, you know. Because you, when I go to court, I see people talking to the judge just sitting up there. He already got the law. He already know what he's going to do. He does. He seriously. Your Honor, it's just how much he's going to pinch you. Your Honor, I was speeding. Yes, sir. I, when you admit it, at least you're better off. I was speeding. Because now, I want to share this because this is on me. He got the state trooper standing over there. Now, he ain't going to look over that state trooper and say, you know, you lie on that person. You better have a good case. You better have a real good case. But he ain't going to tell that. Before he call that state trooper a liar, he going to just do something else. But you ain't going to call Jesus a liar. You, you, you ain't going to call. You are not going to be up there trying to call Jesus a liar. See, now the devil ain't going to be doing no talking. He's going to be over in the corner waiting his turn. Seriously. You're going to look over at him and you're going to want to lump him up or whatever. But that doesn't matter because everybody that's not born again. That's why church, if you really love somebody, get, get them in the path of born again. Don't tell me you love. Y'all, this, this take me to another level. Young ladies, young men. If a person that you're dating or talking to, is, is, is they tell you they love you and they don't want to see you born again, they lying through the death. Tell them, do you want to, you love me? Yeah. You want to see me born again? Are y'all, are y'all with me? Could you imagine that young boy rubbing on your hand? Uh, baby, what's that baby sitting right there? Ter Terrence, what's your baby's name right there? Yeah, I'm picking up. What is it? La, 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 la. I saw you, baby. I just saw, saw your partner just kick his head back. La la for young boy talking to you, which they are, and they coming. If they, huh? He ain't crazy. He got God. He got the hand of God. Yeah. Baby, look. He talking to you, and he talking to you. And if he don't tell you he won't see you born again, they'll tell you in a New York minute. Young people, young people, they'll tell you in a New York minute how good drugs are. I told you that joker put his sloppy mouth, lips all over that Jay, and I'm sucking on it like an idiot. I don't know where his mouth been. I don't know. I'm telling you. He like that. And then roll it. Twist the air. <laughs> how many of you, how many of you had that much sense to suck on that cigarette? Y'all laughing at me, but you know the deal. Now, there's my wife. My wife, before I give her a soda bottle or a water bottle, she look at it and rub the top off. <laughs> That's my wife. I done sucked on more bottles from people I don't even know. We pass in the bottle. Pass the bottle. You hogging it, man. Pass the 40. Don't know where's mouth. Don't even, and for the most part, see the thing. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Pride is what locked me into stupid. Amen. You got somebody trying. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell all you young people. You don't know as much as us. And even if you do, I mean academically, but you don't have the wisdom. That's a fact. I don't care where you go. You can tell anybody. 
You might have went, look, you you just trying to find out where the block is. I'd have been around it 15 times. You haven't even made, made, made it to the block yet. Seriously. So listen to somebody who been there. Amen. Amen. And I know there's peer pressure. And there's always a way. You know how you, how you deal with a bully real good? Take him before God and watch God. I told you, but don't let God do what he does. Because we'll kill him. God has to make him your best friend. And ain't nothing, it's not, it's, there's a lot of things better. But having that bully is your friend. Because I've had individuals who I've wanted God to, God, how come you haven't heard them yet? How many have ever prayed that prayer? You, you prayed the prayer. You didn't want to pray it like that, but that's what you prayed. How come you letting them get away with that? You should have killed them a long time. Well, figure, there was a time you was that person. Amen. So you would have been out of it too. When a person, that's why he said, pray for those who despitefully you. If you had every divorced husband, every divorced wife praying for that individual, you'll make them a friend. You don't need them an enemy. They fighting over, over dumb stuff. And don't let nobody kid you. They ain't fighting for the kids. They fighting because they can use the kids against you. How many know I'm telling the truth? That's the truth. That's about the kids. I can get you. I want you so upset with me that you, when you're driving down the road, you have an accident. Because I don't like, God told me, he told me, this is really smart. He said, if I could, I'd have her killed. Because she was getting money that rightfully she kind of deserved. But if I could kill her, I would. If I could. If I could get her killed, man. Well, some people have went on and did it. You know, that's why church. You, y'all listen to. That's why you gotta be careful who you tie in with. If you know a person, if you know, you looking at them. Go to mama. If if you want to know, go to your mom. Mama tell you. Dads, dads are good, but moms know. Go talk to my mom. What do you think? I took all my girlfriends to mama. Mama did her inventory, put it in her data bank. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I don't care too. And mama said, I don't care too much for that one. I mean, leave them alone. Bring them by. I, but see, my daughter knew. My daughter here, where's, where's my son-in-law? Is he here? I talk about him because he's not here. But I told my daughter, don't you even worry about it, baby. I got your back. Brother, come here looking like he's a whatever. You better come to me like you, you're applying for a job at the highest profession. Uh, you you better and you better have some paper written there. I told the brother, you you get my daughter. You ain't just coming to no man. It don't work like that. And one thing that would irk me: don't blow your horn in my yard. Don't don't you pull out. Boom! I'm coming out. No seriously, I came out. I'm coming out. Who you blowing for, man? I was blow. No, you blowing your way out of my yard. That's what you you better blow like to win. Only one boyfriend my daughter had. I had to put my gloves on. Told my daughter she ain't going to work. Yeah, dad got you working. I put my gloves on. I mean, I ain't going to bust up my knuckles when I bust you in the face. Now, you might get me. You might. Now, see, that's when I was half saved. <laughs> I was half saved. I was saved. I wasn't completely baked. You know, you had, you, had to, you had to turn the light on in the oven and look, he ain't done yet. Yeah, God ain't done with me yet. No, he wasn't done with me. But you ain't no. Telling my daughter, I'm her father. I walked out there, I said, I'm her dad. The day you become her dad, which it ain't going to happen, you tell her what to do. But until then, get the stepping. Right, do you know, young ladies, if you had a father that cared for you like that, I had to watch it, though, because my daughter said, I can always go home. I have to watch that because she can, but not to stay. You know, she <laughs> stay. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, are y'all ready for this? That's how God backs me up. Do you know God, do y'all understand that when the devil, he comes to you, first of all, he got to come to you with permission. He, uh, y'all, y'all, yeah, 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 yeah. he got to go to God. He said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Simon. Now, if you carry in some of his bank, he can come mess with his stuff. So if you carry in some of the devil's luggage, he can come check his stuff out. Yeah, he, so if you acting up some kind of way, he can come over and say, that's mine. I can mess with that. 
And that's why a lot of times, he, if you want the devil to stop messing with certain area, get rid of it. Get rid of it. He can come check his stuff out. You're doing certain things, the devil knows. And he'll hang around as long as he is allowed to hang. But he has to come to go to God. God, I'm going to mess with Simmons. I'm going to mess with him. I've got a certain area out here I'm going to mess with. It. And he, he starts dealing. Now it's up to me to acknowledge God in the area. How many of y'all know I'm telling the truth? You've got some dumb stuff you're messing with. Young folk, right now the spirit of disobedience is rapid. Lawlessness. Don't want to be obedient to people in authority. Oh, my God. I've never seen so many teachers afraid. To, they just go just to be there because it's a job. Afraid to go to school. Oh, my God, I didn't put my time in. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I see where I'm at. But here's what I also find. You ain't tightening them up at home, parents. Parents, are y'all listening to me? You got you to gotta let your child know there is authority in the house. Because when they realize there's authority in the house, they'll realize this is out in the street. See, I, don't, I, I respect the police officer because of his job, not because of his color. You know, I respect people because of who they are. I remember I respected none because she'd tear me up. It's a shame they took spankings out of school. Well, some of them kids, real, well, no, because he'd be fighting in guns. No, that's why we have them in that school. Because we've taken discipline and put it in a bad way. But here's what I do know. Somebody will lock you up. Y'all young people, y'all listen to me real good. When you get to a place where you cannot hear or listen to somebody, you're going to listen to somebody. That's just what it is. You're going to listen to somebody. But it might not be the person you really want to listen to. That individual talking about you ain't getting me up. You go to prison and see what, if you're getting up or not. You want to get up. And when, when Erica gave me those numbers, I said to myself, there is, now, now y'all think about this. We're ever learning. We're, we're one of the, there's stuff that you young people know that, my God, I was in sixth grade doing stuff that my babies are doing in the third grade. In the second, I was in the sixth grade. I was still trying to get multiplication together. They don't even, matter of fact, they're taking cursive out. Cursive writing? We don't need that. Who need cursive writing? We text. We email. They don't really need to write a letter. When's the last time y'all, so you wrote somebody a letter? When's the last, y'all tell me, when's the last time you wrote a letter? I love you. I'm sending a letter. When I was in the Air Force, man, I was writing letters every day. I look at my phone, my God, look at all my messages, Jesus. If everybody wrote me a letter, my mailbox would be overpacked. But see, so we're moving to a level, but we're not learning. Never in my life that I thought in these 63 years on this planet that I would see the devastation I'm seeing today. And the disrespectfulness is unbelievable. How can you? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you what. Do you think God's okay? I mean, God is letting things go. But do you know we're suffering the consequences of? We are literally suffering the consequences of going and bringing this to a close. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. Hundred sixteenth Psalm in one one area I wanna I wanna deal with and I'm going with this in closing. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? And I thought about that. That that verse of scripture right there. I said, What can I give God? Well, first of all, I can't give him me because he owns that. Everything is owned by God. And this brother, when 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 this brother wrote this, here's what he wrote. He said, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows in the presence to the Lord in the presence of all his people. And here's what I come up with, church. I'm going to thank God 
not just by out of word of mouth, but I'm going to show him, my Lord, I love you. How many love the Lord here today? I mean, love him. Lord, I love you. I do. I, look, it ain't about a form or a fashion. It's not about a form or fashion. Lord, I love you. How many can honestly say, you know, because here's the thing, and, and, and I'm not, I done threw this out my back window. It ain't about how much God can give you, because y'all got more stuff than some of us need. Amen. I told y'all, y'all getting them checks coming in. Already spent most of it. Already. Matter of fact, most of it's already owed. How many got it already owed out? So the thing of it is, glory to God, I'm going to thank God for what he's done. I'm going to ask those, glory to God, that will come up because we're done. But here's what I want you to do. As you come up here, first of all, we want to 